You're probably here because you want a key switch and you don't know how to add it to your library. Well, you are in the right place because that is exactly what we're looking at today. Key switches are often used to change articulations or layer types or texture types in your own instrument. And when you see how easy it is to add, you will definitely be able to add them into your instrument as well. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome to Command Shift New. Today, we're gonna to take a quick look at how to create key switches to turn off and on your articulations in your own instrument that you're coding. And we're gonna be using contact KSP scripting to do that. If you've already seen my video on how to turn off and on certain groups with buttons on the interface, then you're probably gonna find this a little bit easier because there's definitely some shared code there. But turning off and on groups is kind of trickier than you might expect if you haven't seen that before. And adding in a key to be the switch makes it just a little bit more complicated. However, after some very simple code, you'll be able to add it to your instrument as well. So let's dive in and take a look at how to do that. So we're gonna be taking a look at mainly how to use the on note block today. That's gonna to be a big part of what it is that we're doing. And I've created a very simple instrument to start us off with. I've got a very simple code that just sets a couple of key colors. If you haven't seen my video on how to do that, do check that out after this. It's very interesting on how to change the key color. But those two keys, C and D in the low register, they're gonna be our actual key switches. So they're gonna be the keys that we're gonna use. I've copied that across to this instrument over here. And in this instrument, you can see my two key switches that I'm gonna be using to turn off two different groups. And I've got the strings here and the brass here that are gonna be doing it. This strings group sample, if I solo this up as a string synth. And the brassy one has a bit more of a brassy sound, of course. Both of these samples are from my free library, Melosaur, which you can find on pianobook.co.uk if you wanna download it as well. Now, the thing that we discovered in the note on and off with a button situation in the last video that I made about this kind of topic is that we can't use a button. The on and off groups function only lives in the on note callback. And the on note callback is the callback that's triggered every time you press a note on the keyboard. Basically, every time you press a note on the keyboard, it will check whether that group should be on or off and then play the samples in the groups that should be on. Pretty straightforward. But we're gonna need to create some code to make sure that that actually happens to the right groups at the right time. So just a few basic concepts to recap. This is actually group zero and this is group one because it's zero based counting. So our strings will be group zero and our brows will be group one. And I've just got one sample in each. And then our keys are going to be uh, C0 and D0. And they're gonna be our two key switching ones. And I might add some comments here. And I would say that this one is gonna be the strings one. And this one is going to be the brass one. And that's D0. And this one is C0. Cool, that'll just help us keep a track of everything. Down here in the on note callback, I've already got it in here. And what it's doing at the moment is every time I play a note, it's just messaging out the note number. And that's how I got to find out what these key colors are. And if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. But for now, we can just remove that one. We don't need it. Now, our first step seems kind of counterintuitive, but what we have to do in order to be able to turn on certain groups is first of all, we need to turn off all the groups. So there's a simple function called disallow group, and we have a contact variable, which is just all groups. So this will say disallow every single group. If I copy that across and pop it here into my script editor, and I'm just gonna turn off the group solo. So realistically, if I didn't have this disallow all groups business going on, I would hear two samples. But instead, when I play a key, nothing is happening. And that's because as soon as I press that key, it disallows all groups, and then it plays the remaining samples, which is in none of the groups that are allowed. What we now want to do is use the key samples at the bottom to turn on certain groups. Now, you think it would be fairly straightforward, right? You would say maybe an if function might be in use, and you'd say that maybe if the note the event note is equal to 24, you could say allow group zero, right? You think that that would be fairly straightforward and you, you're sort of on the right track at this point. If I copy that across and pop that in my script and I now hit that C0 key, I'll do it on the keyboard here so you can see it. So I press that one, which theoretically turns on our strings group. And then I play a key still nothing happening. The reason for this is that the on note group is paying attention to every single key. And right now, the way that we've set it up is we're saying if the event is the note key that's the actual key switch, 
then you're allowed to play the other groups. But if it's any other key, you can't play any of the groups. So essentially, we're not allowed to play any group or anything unless we play that key switch, at which point one group is allowed through, but there's no sample map to that key anyway, so no sound is still coming through. Here's how we actually do it. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable up the top here. So I'm just gonna create a simple variable. I'm gonna declare it as group. And I'm not going to set it to anything at the moment. And down here, I'm going to say if the event note is 24, if it's the string zero, instead what I'm going to do is I am going to assign to that new variable the value of zero. So what I'm doing is I'm updating the variable when I tap that key. I can use a second if function if I want to as well and do something similar. So I go event note again, but this time it's equal to 26. And I'm going to, at this point, set the group or assign it the value of one. So if the other one is hit, it's gonna change that variable to one. Now we've got two functions that are basically changing that variable to zero or one. Now what we do after this is we use that variable, whether it's zero or one, to decide on which group to allow. So then we can come down here and go allow group, and the index will actually be the group variable. So if we highlight and copy that across, now I press the C0 and I should get a string sound. Press the D0 and I should get a brass sound. Really, really straightforward. So what we're basically doing is we're using the key switches down the bottom to assign a value to a variable. And then we're using that variable as the qualifier of which group to allow. There's one little sneaky thing I wanna add in here as well. And that is that you can condense this if function, these two if functions down into one single function. And that's by using a select function. And I've actually done a video on that as well, the difference between if and select. But here's a quick recap. I'm just gonna highlight this and I'm gonna comment it out for now so it doesn't actually do anything. And I'm gonna come down here and recreate it using the select function. So I'm gonna go select, and I'm going to say, what am I selecting? Well, I'm selecting the event note. This will make more sense in a moment. And of course, my select function has an end select like a lot of things in contact. What this select function does is it goes, okay, take a look at the event note. And then if that event note is one of these cases or conditions, do certain things depending. So I then within my select function go, if it's the case that it is 24, I want you to assign group the value of zero. And if it's the case that it is in fact 26, so it's the other key, then I want you to assign to group the value of, uh, of one there, sorry, <laughs> there we go. It's exactly the same as the if functions. It will ignore all the other event notes and do nothing. It will only do it if it's an event note of 24 or 26, but I've collapsed it into one thing. And this is very handy if you've got like 20 different if functions that you've written, a select function may be a lot better. Doesn't seem like much now with only two different articulations, but if you had 20 articulations, it would certainly make a difference. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that one and got a lot of use out of it. And I hope that's answered the question on how to create your own key switches in your library. Of course, if you're looking to build a lot more more in contact and wanting to know more about how to do that, then this is a great channel for you. There's quite a lot of content already out there on this channel for contact and plenty more to come. So why not consider subscribing on your way out? But otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.